I'm Stuart and this is Upcycle TV. In this video, I'm going to tell you all about marketing. The best marketing for your upcycle business. Now, if you want to know a little bit about why you should listen to me and why um, why I know what I know about marketing, then um, hear me out for the next couple of minutes. So I, I've been in business for 20 years. Um, from a young age, I started my first business and that business is still running today. But it's only really been in the last, maybe I'd say about seven or eight years that I've actually really began to understand the science of marketing and, and actually not just how to do marketing, but the impact that it has on your business. Um, to give you a little example, our business was uh, running a turnover of around about £200,000 a year. And that was at year, round about year 12. So 12 years of trading and learning marketing within, within a year, we bumped our sales up from 200,000 to 600,000. So like times three, our turnover, our business grew um, so quickly, too quickly in fact, um, that it caused a little bit of pain. But the point of the point of this is you the marketing drove the drove that business. It was all about the marketing. And today the business is turning over um, double that again almost. What marketing does, it takes your business to another level if you get it right. So there's something about the upcycle market and you know I'm on a real mission to lift the upcycling market and really disrupt the industry and actually try and, uh, well, not try. And we are actually going to make people think differently about upcycled furniture, both the buyers and the sellers. Part of that process is that upcycle business owners have to understand that they have a business and it is no different from any other business. We've got to stop underpricing products. We've got to stop seeing upcycling as a, as a cheaper alternative. It isn't a cheaper alternative. It's a piece of art. We've got to raise our prices. We've got to, we've got people have got to pay and want to pay for this great, fantastic work that everyone is doing. But that's very difficult to do if the marketing isn't correct. And that's where the market is going to come into that now. So I've put together the 11 most effective marketing techniques that I believe you can implement to really rocket your upcycle business to success. Once you put these 11 into practice, you're going to see magic happen. You're going to be inundated with customers. That means you're going to be able to spend more time doing the work, making the, you know, making sure you do a really, really good job, deliver an exceptional service and ultimately charging more for your services. So here are my top 11 ways to market your upcycle business. So the first one is Facebook advertising. Now I'm not talking about having a page. I'm not talking about posting in sale groups. Um, and not that there's anything wrong with those things, but I'm specifically talking about paying Facebook to market your individual pieces. Let's just say you've painted a piece that has bunny rabbits on it and it's really cute and nice and you you know who your kind of typical customer would be for a piece of furniture like that. Let's say it's a bedroom chest of drawers and it's got these little bunnies on it. Um, that you've decoupaged on and it looks really cute and everything and you know that who the buyer roughly is going to be age wise probably female market um, and I'm not being I'm not saying that from a sexist point of view I'm just saying that if you're marketing you want to try and find your average customer so that is your average customer. Go after your average customer and things will fall into place. What sort of things would they like? Perhaps they would like um, things like Alice in Wonderland or uh, Beatrice Potter and all these kinds of things. So you can start to identify your customer. Facebook's very clever. It knows um, an awful lot about us as the users. So you can identify, you can put all these things and they've got to like this and they've got to like that. You can put them if you um, are selling in a local area, you can identify a radius from your postcode. So you can say five miles within your postcode 
then from there, um, you can then specify how much you want to spend on the marketing. You can say how much you want to pay per click, all these kinds of things. It is quite complex and you will need, if you haven't done it before, you will probably need someone to show you, watch some YouTube channel videos. I think the first time I did Facebook advertising was about, yeah, it's pro probably about six years ago. Uh, I read a book, find something that's current and up to date and give it a go. And you know, you don't have to spend a lot of money doing this. If you've got a piece of furniture that's for sale for 200 pounds, um, I would be looking to spend at least 10 to 20 pounds marketing that on Facebook. And don't forget, you know, because you're widening your audience, because you're, you're putting that out there to so many more people you can now charge a little bit more for that piece. So perhaps you can charge um, £220 to cover the cost of your marketing. The next thing that I would say, and these are not in any particular order, but the next thing I would say that you really need to be doing is you need to make sure that you have a website for your business. So a very good website, it doesn't have to be all flashy and amazing and like you don't have to spend loads of money on it, just a basic WordPress site um, that's maybe got four or five pages, how to contact you, some great examples of your work. Make sure you've got some testimonials on there from previous customers. Just the little bits and pieces that will really, um, you know, build, you're building confidence in the customer to buy this piece of furniture from you. So anything you can do to put in there to, to make that customer feel like, yes, I really need to buy from this person. They obviously know what they're doing. They're producing wonderful furniture. It's also a great way to build your commission base as well. The other great thing about a website is people will find you wouldn't necessarily have found you. Um, and you can do that by having great SEO. And SEO is all about keywords. It's about having content on your site. So think about what you can provide to people. Um, maybe use some videos showing them how they, how you paint the furniture, uh, bit videos of you talking about it or examples of your furniture that you've painted little bits and pieces like that really, really help as well to, to push your um, website up through the rankings. The other thing I would definitely have on the website is forms. And that leads me on to number three, email marketing. So if you have forms on your website, the form is a way that can capture your potential customer's data. So the form could literally just be fill it in and you tell them when pieces of furniture come into stock or it could be a newsletter or what's more effective is if you're actually giving away something free, which is called a lead magnet. So you might want to think about what you could give your customer. Maybe a, if you have a shop, maybe it could be a voucher, um, a 10 percent off voucher or something to spend in store. Anything that will get the customer to fill that form in and then you're, you're capturing their data. You do need to make sure you've got your GDPR um, stuff up to date. Um, so if you don't know about that, then take some advice on that. But it's not difficult. Once you've got all that in place, they fill in the forms um, on your site. You've then got their email. So number three is email marketing. I'll tell you a story about why this works. So the other day on Facebook, someone was asking, um, can they recommend a local electrician? They have a need for some electrical work that needs to do in their house. Right. So they posted up on Facebook. And someone said, oh, what about so-and-so that you told me about a few months ago? So what? And she, oh, yeah, I forgot about that person. OK, and this is a true story. I was reading it. I, I found it quite interesting. So as it transpired, this person that was asking for someone to recommend a, an electrician had already recommended an electrician in the past and had forgotten about it. So this is why email marketing is so important, because you just keep on plugging away once a week, once a month, whatever it is. Just keep sending those people a little email. Oh, hi. How are you? Did you know uh, we've just got this new piece of furniture in or um, I've got a, a, an offer this week where I'm giving 15 percent off of a such and such. Or I've got this piece of furniture that's been sat here for a while. I need to clear it. Whatever it might be, there's a hundred thousand reasons that you could email someone. All you need to do is make sure that you put a good heading in there and that you personalize it. 
Now, you don't have to personalize and write every single email because there's clever software now that will do that for you. So all you have to actually do is um, use something like MailChimp, which is completely free, and then you can put your um, customer's name in the subject. So you can say something like, hi, so, um, Mr. Jones, did you know we've got a 10% off this Saturday? So something like that. Um, very powerful, you'll get good open rates and you'll just stay in touch so that they don't ever forget you. Don't be like that electrician. If that electrician had sent his customer after he did the work a weekly email, they would keep seeing that email, keep seeing it, keep seeing it, and they, it would never have been forgotten. He would have been at the top of her mind as soon as um, she needed an electrician. Number four is referrals. Referrals are really, really powerful and people do not use them as much as they should. So the first thing you need to do is get testimonials from your customers. You know, when you know they're happy and you've done a good job for them and like, I really, really love the furniture, get them to write a testimonial, what you did for them, how you did it, how efficient you were on time and make sure you're using that. But also then say to them, look, if other people are not sure, can I give them your name to contact and you know verify that I am good at what I do most people will just say yes you know they they will because they want to be helpful right um you know ask people say please do refer us you know I really do want to build my business you know I'm I, I want to grow this year I want to like bring in staff and employ people and you know I'm, I'm really passionate about delivering exceptional service so if you could recommend me I promise I won't let you down we, we will always I will always deliver exceptional service and, and get that message across to your customers and really let them know how important those referrals are. And it, it really will make a difference. It really, really does make a difference when you actually ask people those questions. Of course, you have to deliver the exceptional service to them, otherwise they're not gonna do it, are they? They're gonna um, probably say other things about you which you wouldn't want them to. So make sure you back it up with the great service. On to number five, which is, um, Using sites like uh, eBay, Gumtree, um, Etsy, Venteria, there's lots of them out there. Make sure you spread your betting and get out across on all of them. So if you've got 10 or 20 pieces, make sure that um, you have, you know, at least a few on eBay, at least a few on Gumtree. It's a really good way to actually market yourself as well on those sites. You, you know, you can usually put in your business details on there and saying that we, you know you do commission work and all those kinds of things on the actual listings themselves so if people are seeing your listings even if they don't buy that particular piece of furniture you're still getting advertising out there on that note make sure you get your furniture on vintup.co.uk so that's our site and every piece of furniture that you list is completely free there are options to upgrade and you can do loads of other extra stuff and I recommend going for the gold option because it's so amazing and excellent. But if you don't want to do that, fine. Use the free option. Um, it is completely 100% free. Um, that's vintup.co.uk. Move on to number six. This one is probably more relevant to those of you that have shops or that are doing a lot of commission work or, or want to do commission work. But the one thing I would 100% have to do every single time is Google AdWords. I'm gonna choose my favorite way of advertising. If I could only ever do one thing, it would be Google AdWords. If you do it right, it's cheap, it's effective, it will drive unlimited customers to you. It is absolutely phenomenal, but you have to do it right. There is a, it is very complex, there's a lot of science behind it, and you can, just as much as you can make a lot of money and drive a lot of customers, you can equally lose a lot of money and waste a lot of money and not get many customers from it. Number seven is remarketing. So I don't know if you've ever been on a website, um, you've looked at holidays or something, and then the next month or so, as you're scrolling across the internet, you keep seeing advertising for um holidays you know so basically that is someone that's put a pixel on your um, ip that knows you've been to their site and it, and google and facebook and all these others will then say okay 
we will show that you give us your advert and we will show that to those people that have been on the site so they don't actually see it facebook and google kind of have a um an automated very clever ai system that works in the background that makes that happen and it is very very effective because how many times have you been on a website and not bought first time and then kind of forgotten about it or something else has come up whereas if you've got that remarketing in place you just keep on drip feeding back to them it's a little bit like the email marketing we were talking about earlier you're constantly constantly reminding them and go oh yeah i didn't buy that thing and they go back and they buy it um, and it does work it really does work okay so the next thing you want to think about is doing a lot of video um it, it is one that's quite uncomfortable for people and, and they can procrastinate over this but i found that once you just crack on and get it done the more you do the easier it gets you can set it up relatively easy if you look at our youtube channel which is um, upcycle tv uh, there is a little video on there there's nothing in there that's really really difficult or expensive so there's no reason why you can't get up and running and get making some videos for your beautiful upcycled furniture for number nine i'm going to come back to um, social media again i did talk about facebook as my first point but this is i'm just talking about social media posts so making sure you've got a, an instagram account Twitter account, Facebook page and account, and you're cross-referencing those. LinkedIn is also very good, um, but just keep on posting and your videos ties to this. You can post your videos on those platforms. And if you have events or offers, you can post those up too. Number 10 is trade fairs so and car boots. Um, get out to these places and, and, you know, even if you've got a shop, there's no reason why you can't you know, get out on a Sunday, uh, I, you know, if you don't open on a Sunday and, you know, work one Sunday every month and, and get out to the trade fairs, get get your furniture out in front of people. That's what marketing is all about. This brings me on to point 11, my last point, leaflets. Uh, and, you know, we use leaflets in a traditional format. So we'll pay someone to put them through people's doors and, you know, always returns, you know, you always have to do a lot consistently. Um, and make sure that you've got the right messages on there. Uh, you've got call to actions and that it attracts the eye as well. So there's, there's, you know, there's a, quite a bit that goes into producing a leaflet. But once you've got that bit right, yes, um, get them out door to door, but also you can use them and give them out at places like trade fairs and car boot sales. You know, we've I've been to many car boot sales where I just you know, I want to get rid of my stock. I've got some odd bits and pieces that I want to clear. And there's a good amount of footfall there. So why not use it? Take a big stack of leaflets with you. And every single person that goes by, give the leaflets out. Start building some data. You know, so there's no reason why you can't have a little um, competition for people where they can give you their details for something else. Like we were talking earlier about forms on a website. You know, another way of um, collecting data is by physically asking people like that as well as leaflets is also magazines so you can put adverts in your local handy magazines or um, newspapers things that do have good readership i find the ones now that work better are the ones that are put through doors because you do find that people actually do pick up and use them whereas newspapers are just on the decline all the time i i don't spend any money i used to spend a lot of money with newspapers i don't spend anything now but I do um, still do magazines because I do find that I do get a good return from them. Good, high quality, glossy, full coloured magazines. One that, or a couple that we've used that work well where we are in our area is the Cotswold magazine and Wiltshire Life. Put a, a nice colourful picture. You know, think, think what a designer would do. Think what the best marketing company in the world would, would do if they were selling your product. And let me just close on that point because... When you have a customer and they are buying a piece of furniture from you, you really need to think about what they're really buying because you can go to Ikea and you can buy a chest of drawers or you can go to um, B&Q or Argos or something and buy flat packed furniture, right? But why would someone buy 
a piece of furniture from you? What is it about what you're doing that is unique that someone would want to buy? And it, that word unique is really powerful, bespoke, hand-painted, restored. These are all the words that you want to bring into your marketing. They're really, really important. They're very powerful. They mean a lot. Um, what you're doing is art. It's one-off. It's unique. It's a designer piece of furniture. Don't sell on price. Sell on the greatness of what you are doing. And I genuinely mean that. I hope you found the video useful. I really do want to help. I really do want to raise upcycled furniture market. I want to do everything I can and I and I want to support you, every single one of you that are there out there painting furniture. So let's raise the standards of upcycled furniture. Let's make it an industry to be absolutely proud of because you're all doing amazing work. Keep it up and I'll see you with your lovely, beautiful furniture on vintup.co.uk. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you really enjoyed it. If you don't want to miss any of our content, subscribe to the channel and click the bell so that you get all the notifications. You can also follow us on Twitter, at UpcycleTV. And we have a website where you can buy and sell furniture. It's completely free to use upcycledirectory.co.uk